So I'm honored to be with you this morning um, to hear what God has to say. I believe that when you come to church that you should come to receive, to understand, and to live out. Is that right? Because it's so imperative now because everybody is wondering all around our country and in churches the world over. But I believe that we should have understanding, amen, and that we should have insight into what God is doing in the earth so that we don't become vagabonds in the world like some are. And so that's why it's so important that we, we show up at the local assembly on a Sunday morning that we've prepared ourselves to receive, not just to hear, but to receive. Because when you receive, that means that you get it uh, entangled in your being so that you can walk out those words that you hear. You come intentionally on purpose to receive a word from God that will change your life. In other words, I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. It's, it's so important that that's your confession that I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. I refuse to leave the same way. Listen, because it took me too long to get dressed this morning. I'm not leaving the same way that, the way that I came. I had to use some gas to get here this morning. Amen. I had to get up early this morning. So if I got to do all of those things to make it to the house of the Lord, then that means, listen, God, I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. I'm going to pull. I'm going to draw. I'm going to twist because, God, I'm not leaving the same way that I came. I'm experiencing some things. I'm going through some stuff. Everywhere I go, there's some things happening that seems to be an opposition of what you told me, God, so I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. Truly honor my pastors this morning, Pastor Claude and Pastor Gina, in their absence. And then I honor my partners in the gospel, Elder Harris and Elder Hayes. And I truly honor those that are here in the physical edifice with us this morning. You're so important to what we do, so I truly honor you. And I honor those who are viewing by each church this morning. Uh, because there's an anointing even in you being in your home and being committed, amen, to being with us this morning. So I thank God for you. And I'm praying that God would touch your heart even as you receive this word on this morning. But it's so imperative uh, because things are happening and sometimes we think, we take things for granted. We don't talk about them. We've, we've made things more normal than what they should be. We begin to accept things that happen to us as though, hey, this is just what it is. You know, this is just what it is. This is my lot in life. But that's not how God wants us to interpret and to experience those things that are around us. Some things that happen to us, we got to learn that are not acceptable. We have to endure, but it's not acceptable. We have to experience, but it's not acceptable. And so we have to uh, uh, have a different perspective on a lot in life and say, God, listen, something has to change. I'm not leaving the same way that I came. When you pray, God, I'm not getting up off of my knees the same way that I went down. That's a transition that I'm taking. I'm like uh, 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 going through a metamorphosis process. Because, God, I want to be different. I want to be different. I am going to be different. Amen? Amen? So this morning, let's go into the word of the Lord this morning. And I'm going to be brief. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out, rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifested in all the palace, in all other places, so much of other places. And many of my brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. They're more emboldened to testify, to witness without fear. Somebody say without fear. I want to talk briefly from don't waste your afflictions. You've experienced too much in life to waste it. You've gone through too much to waste it. Uh, uh, 
because it's so important that we don't relive things. Everything that we experience has a, ma a maturation process, a maturing process. It, it's, it's a graduation process. It's a promotion process. So much so that we should not want to experience the same thing over and over and over again. Listen, God, listen, I'm going to take this class. I'm going to graduate from this. I'm not going to keep going through this over and over again because there's something that you're requiring of me. And so, God, I'm going to ride this wave the right way so that I can grow. The word affliction is something that causes pain or suffering, misfortune, and trouble. Now, I don't know about you. I've experienced a lot of pain in life. I don't want to experience again not that pain. <laughs> you know, I don't want to experience that pain. Now, God, if I'm going to experience pain and suffering, let it be uh, because of something different. I don't want to experience that anymore. So, if God, if I'm going to go through, let it be because of something else in life. I don't want to be a repeater. I don't want to be a repeat offender. I want it to be something totally different. So, don't waste your afflictions. Uh, you see... Your resolution must remain the same even when everything seems to be in opposition of what you're believing God for. Your resolution must be the same. The same thing you believe going in must be the same thing you believe coming out. Uh, my re resolution has to be same. the same. I can't allow my circumstances to change what I believe. I said again, because some people allow the circumstances to change what they believe. And I can't allow my circumstances to change what I believe. As Jesus was Lord when I was going in, Jesus is Lord when I'm coming out. If I raise my hand to praise him going in, I'm going to raise my hand to praise him going out. Because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so when we have character in our situation, we have to have that same character to get us out. So don't waste your affliction. Paul uh, had always wanted to go to Rome to preach the gospel. Uh, however, he expected to go as a preacher and not as a prisoner. You see, because uh, oftentimes we expect God to do things one way and God do it another way. And sometimes uh, the situation causes us pain because we don't know what's going on or what God is doing in our lives. So, uh, Paul, he was illegally arrested in the temple in Jerusalem. He was a, fi a prisoner in Caesarea for two years. He appealed to Caesar. He was shipwrecked on the way to Rome three months of waiting on the island of Malta. He was under house of rest. All these are things that Paul did not expect that he would endure. These afflictions... Paul think that God would do things one way and things happen a total different way. Isn't it funny sometime in life that we think things are going to happen one way, but things happen a total different way. We believe that God is going to do it this way, and God does it a total different way. Uh, he allow us to go through the valley of despair. He does it a different way. And there's a purpose and there's a reason why God does what he does and why he allows things to happen a certain way that he does. It doesn't mean that he stopped being God. It doesn't mean that he stopped loving you, Evangelist James. It's just that God know what he wants to get out of our lives. And God, God always, try, he's trying to get the best out of us. Nothing that God allows uh, happens so that he could destroy us. Everything that God allows, he'll allow it to build us up, to strengthen us so that we can endure those things that are to come down in our future. 
So anything that you experience, God will even use those things that people, uh, 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 Joseph said this, Joseph said, hey, you meant it for my good, but God made it turn around. You meant it for my bad, but God made it work for my good. So even when people try to hurt you, uh, God will turn that thing around for your good. So you have to learn how to not misuse your, uh, waste your affliction because no matter what people do concerning you, God said, listen, I'll make it work for you. Uh, even when the intention was bad, God said, I'll make it work for you because there's some things that people will try to bring upon you and there's some things that the process of life will happen to you, but God said, no matter how it come, I'm going to cause it to work out for your good. I'm going to make it work for you so good that I'm going to put you on display and that other people will realize and they will see how I brought you out. So much so, according to our scripture this morning, they will embolden the brothers to speak more boldly. Because when people see how you handle affliction and you remain steadfast, you keep the same resolution, they'll say, hey, if they came out of that, if they came through that, because that that seemed like it was insurmountable and that you wasn't going to survive. That some that's that you go through that sometime uh, you might not even believe that you're going to survive. However, if you keep your resolution going in, God will bring you out the same way you went in. I'm praying that God bless somebody this morning. So Paul was not discouraged. Arrested on house arrest, arrested in the temple, arrested at church. <laughs> he was arrested, but he wasn't dejected. He wasn't discouraged because he knew afflictions were a part of the life of the believer. So I'm always peculiar when, when people say, listen, I haven't been through anything all week long. I've had the greatest year, and it could be the greatest year. But when you experience, when you go down a road, there's some bumps in the road. There's some potholes in the road. So while I made it to my destination, I had to experience some things. So you might make it through your destination, but it's designed uh, in God's uh, plan so that in your innate living that you would experience some stuff because God is working on us. God is doing some things in us. Second Timothy says this, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. So even though I'm being afflicted, the word ain't bound. It's still going to do what it's going to do. Even though I'm going through some things, the word is not bound. The word is still able to break some things. It's not bound. So if I don't allow the word to be bound in me, that same word that you have on the inside of you this morning is that same word that's a chain breaker. It's the same word that can deliver you. It's the same word that can turn things around for you. So when you're experiencing affliction, you got to continue to profess the word of God. You got to continue to declare the word of God because it might look like I'm under arrest in the physical, but in the spirit realm, I'm still a giant. I'm still talking. I'm still telling the enemy that he's not going to have this, and he's not going to continue to mess with my life. And it's okay. You got to speak out of you the word of God that you have on the inside of you. Um, but sad to say uh, that a lot of people, when they go through affliction, uh, they allow the voice to be taken. And when your voice is taken, you go through that situation a long time. You go through that situation a long time. When you allow the enemy to take your voice. First Thessalonians 3, verses 3 and 4, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. So what am I saying? That even when you're going through in life, based on what the scripture says, no man should be moved by these afflictions. I'm not saying you're not going to go through some emotional discomfort. You might even share a tear or two. 
But you, sh you should not be moved. Uh, you shouldn't stop coming to church. You, you shouldn't stop praising God and you should not stop worshiping God and you shouldn't be getting angry with everybody because you're going through. Because uh, as funny as it might seem, they might be going through the same time that you're going through. They just might be handling it a little different. You don't know that they're going through. You don't know the heaviness that they're carrying. They just know how to carry it. So, so you should not be moved. For he says, yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer affliction, even as it came to pass, and you know. As a believer this morning, I submit unto you that if you really lift up the name of Jesus Christ, then you're going to experience some stuff in life. If you really uh, exalt the name of Jesus uh, through your living, through your character, through your giving, there are some things that's going to happen in your life that's going to be contrary to what God told you you should expect from him. And you see, the reason sometimes nobody goes through it, somebody, some people don't go through anything, is because they're not lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, it don't take you long to attract the enemy when you're lifting up the name of Jesus. Don't take you long to attract the enemy when you're lifting up that name. Because that name is an enemy attractor. <laughs> uh, and... and, and uh, people, when they come to Christ, they got to understand that this is not just going to be uh, happy and, and, and loving every day. There's some things that you're going to experience because there's some things that God's trying to get out of you. And you got to know that when those things happen, when those affliction take place, I will not be moved. I'm not going to change my profession. I'm not going to change my confection because... This is a package deal. Y'all yeah. know what a bundle is. <laughs> when you get those uh, things, uh, cable and, and uh, internet and, and, and all those things, they give you a bundle. <laughs> so when you lift up your name and you confess that you're saved, you get a bundle deal. Yeah. And part of that bundle package is affliction. Yeah. Part of that a bundle, uh, bundle package is pain. Part of that package, Henry is suffering. But you got to know that even though it's a part of the package, within that bundle, God has given you the necessary strength. He's given you the word to balance out anything that you would ever experience. Yeah. He says in Philippians 1.29, For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ that not only to believe in him, but also suffer for his name's sake. Selah. You have to, if you belong to Christ, he says, you have to also suffer for his sake. It's not enough to believe on him. Because if you just believe on him when the suffering starts, then you'll stop believing. But you got to believe on him and know and realize that even in those suffering moments, your belief is not going to change. Because it's given unto us to suffer also with him so that we don't waste our afflictions. Paul, his experiences. Uh, you find in Acts chapter 20, verses 22 through 24. He says, now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save the Holy Ghost witnesses every day, saying that bounds and affliction abide me. But none of these things move me. It's, it's a part of my employment package, but it ain't going to move me. You, went, you know when you go to work, they say you're going to be making $100,000. Man, you come back, you testify to everybody. You shout, yes, Lord, I'm getting six figures. And then all of a sudden, FICA come out. <laughs> Social Security come out. Medicaid come out. Your six figure just dropped under six figure. It just dropped to five. But you know that you're not going to be moved. 
So he says, none of these things move me. He says, not knowing these things that shall befall me there. I'm being taken to Jerusalem. I don't even know what I'm going to see. I don't know what I'm going to experience. See, things are happening to me that are unpredictable. But I'm not shocked. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. Every day we get up, there's some things that's going to happen that's unpredictable. I don't know what I'm going to face every day, each day that I get up. But one thing I do know, if God be for me. Who can be against me? I don't know when I get to work. I don't know when I visit my relatives. I don't know uh, because it's unpredictable. But one thing I do know, if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm not going to be moved because there's a job and there's an appointed assignment that I have that God will not allow me to be destroyed. But Paul said, I'm going to finish my course with joy. And the ministry that I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. See, God does everything to get some juice out of it. If you ain't got, listen, if you got some juice in it, he's going to get it. Yes, yeah, so he's going to crush them olives. You, I mean, you're going to get crushed. If you want some anointing, God going to crush them olives. And it's not always, it, does, it doesn't always feel good. But God knows what he's doing. Every affliction we suffer is an investment that God is making in us. When God allows us to go through some things, like I said earlier, it's not to destroy us and not to kill us, but it's to make us better. Because, see, God is doing something peculiar in us that we don't even understand ourselves. We pray and we tell God all these wonderful things. God, I want to be used by you. I want you to make me what you want to make me, God. I want to be a spiritual giant, and I want to know the word, and I want to be unchangeable and unmovable. God says, okay. (laughs) Then he starts to crush. And then you say, God, are you there? What's that, uh? What's that movie that I heard you just saying? Are you there, God? You been saying, are you there, God? <laughs> oh, when life hits you, are you there, God? And when you can't hear him, you, are you there, God? But God never changes position. God is everywhere at all times. And if God was with you prior to, God will be with you in the end. So if the Lord did not permit troubles in our lives, That would be the worst form of rejection. If you're not experiencing any trouble in your life, that's the worst form of rejection. Because if you are a son of God, the Bible declares that God chastens those who are his. He chastens his son. And so that's the lowest form of rejection if you don't never experience trouble. I know that may have went over your head. But when you're going through things and you're going through affliction, remember I said God has his hand on your life. It may not look like it, it may be uncomfortable, but God has his hands on your life. And as long as you abide by the word of God and you continue to be faithful during those moments of affliction, God has his hand on your life. And you, when God has his hand on your life, he has his hand on your life for a reason. He has his hand on your life for a purpose because there always has to be preparation before the promise. I said again, there has to be preparation before the promise. And see, the way uh, you experience or the resolution or the result of affliction is determined how you handle it going in and in the middle. If you don't handle affliction right, then the effects that God designed for you in that season of your life, you'll never get. That's why so much so when you show up, you got to say, God, I don't understand, but I'm going to lift my hand. I don't understand, but God, I'm going I'm to continue to praise you. God, I don't understand, but I'm going to connect myself in this season with someone who's going to lift me up. I don't understand, but listen, I'm not going down to Egypt because I don't understand. I'm going to continue to come to the temple. David had a season in his life when there was a famine in the land. He decides that he wants to go down to Egypt. Egypt is a form of the world. Goes to Egypt, get in trouble. 
Anytime you're going through a spiritual famine, you don't go back to the world. You come to the temple. You don't go back to your mama and them who are in the world and your cousin them who are in the world. You don't go back to them. Uh, when you're going through a spiritual famine and affliction is coming uh, uh, on your life from every side, that's when you run to the church and you say, God, you got to change my environment. God, you got to change my situation. God, people don't even know what I'm internally experiencing. I'm so hurt. I'm so broken. I'm so misunderstood. But God, instead of staying at home, I'm going to the church. I'm going with my hands lifted up. I'm going to get in the prayer service. God, as close as I can get to the altar, God, I'm coming because, God, I'm not going down to the Egypt. I'm not going down to the world because if I go down to the world, I'm going to be dried up. I'm going to be destroyed. But, God, if I can get to the temple because I know where the saints are, I know where you reside, God, if I can get to the temple, but the sad thing is, when a lot of people are going through things, they don't believe the saints no more. I don't want to talk to no saint. Mama, let me tell you something. So they go back to their mama and them. They go back to the friends they had before they was in the world, and they miss an opportunity to go through and let God do what he has to do. Because affliction prepares you to handle the weightier things in life. Affliction allows you to receive the promise. That's why so many saints forever stay in kindergarten. See, God will use affliction to bring us out into a place of abundant fruitfulness. God, he's just not going to heap stuff on us if we can't handle it. You have to be tested first. Psalm 66, verses 10 to 12 says this. For thou, O God, has proved us. Hmm. How did he prove you? <laughs> you got to go through some tests. For thou, O God, has proved us. Thou has tried us as silver is tried. How is silver tried? You got to get in some fire. But he says, they brought us, us into the net. Thou lays affliction upon our loin. Thou has caused men to ride over our head. We went through the fire and we went through the water. But thou brought us, us out into a wealthy place. You got to be proved, my brothers and sisters. You got to be tried. You got to go through the fire. You got to go through the water. But just know this, that when you get through going through, the Bible says God is going to bring you out in a wealthy place. He's going to bring you out fruitful. He's going to bring you out uh, in abundance when you go through the right way. That's why you have to wait. You have to ride the wave of affliction. I don't, I don't care. That's why sometimes you might have to come, but don't shut your mouth. Open your mouth and praise God. Lift up your hand and say, God, and sometimes it might be with tears rolling down the locks of your chin, and it's okay because, listen, as long as you lift those hands, God will release a spirit of comfort. He will put salve on you that no one understand so much so that your problem that moment of affliction will begin to seem small things that you thought you could not handle you'll find that I'm like superwoman I'm like supergirl I'm like superman because what I thought was insurmountable when I lifted up my hand when I when I waved and when I shouted I forgot all about the affliction I forgot all about my problems I forgot all about discouragement because when I opened my mouth and began to praise God God does something in the midst of a praise. He does something in the midst of a worshiper. That's why when you come to the house of God, you got to learn how to become a worshiper. You got to learn how to become a praiser. No matter what I feel like, no matter what it looked like, I still have to praise God because my strength is in God through his precious Holy Spirit. So no matter what I'm experiencing, I'm going to praise him. If I can't lift my hands, I'm going to move my legs. If 
if I can't move my legs, I'm going to open my mouth. I don't care what it looks like, but my whole being belongs to God. And so listen, I'm going to use everything that I got to give God some praise. If I broke my arm, I'm going to shake my feet. If I can't open my mouth, I'm going to shake my head because in the shaking, God's going to bring me out. In the shaking, God going to deliver me. In the shaking, God's going to heal me. So you got to know, don't waste your affliction. I know sometimes it seems bad. I know sometimes it seems heavy, but don't waste your affliction. Ride the wave of affliction and God is going to prepare you for the promise. And listen, people are going to watch you going through the affliction. Some may even talk about you going through the affliction, but when God bring you out in that abundant place, when God bring you out in that fruitful place, listen, they got to testify of his goodness. When you walking around and you got huge fruit in your hand, when you got abundance in your hand, they'll ask how did he come out? He came out blessed. He came out promoted. He came out healed. He came out delivered. He came out praising. He came out worshiping. He came out thanking God. He came out with a promotion he, because he's been prepared by God. How did he come out? He came out with abundance of fruit in his hand. And according to Paul, Paul said, those that saw me, they became emboldened in their witnessing. And when you come out, when people have seen you go through the affliction, they're going to testify on your behalf that God is good because they saw what you experienced. They saw how you handled it. They saw how you came out. So they're going to testify and witness it on your behalf. God is good. So don't waste your affliction. Keep praising. Keep worshiping. And keep magnifying God. So any opportunity when you experience a thing in life, learn how to draw nigh God in your praise, your worship, and in your prayer. Don't waste your affliction. And don't get mad with everybody else. Even when you think they've done something wrong to you and about you, it's not about them. It's about what God is trying to get to you. It's about what God is trying to do to you and for you. So stop being mad with folks and say, God, I thank you. Because God, everything that he does is a learning lesson for you. You'll never be anointed if you don't go through something. God, allow people to crush us so that we can carry anointing. And what God is wanting now as he's warning mature saints who have gone through some things to be able to testify and to teach others who are coming in how to go through some things. What a mature saint said. You see, because one thing about mature saints uh, a lot of people think when someone is going through, you need to cry with them and, 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 and rub them down and hug them. But a mature saint would say, baby, just hang on in there because you coming out. That's mature saying, baby, hang on in there. Give me a hug. I'm praying for you, but you coming out. Every time you say, baby, hang in there. I'm praying for you, but you coming out. That's different from hugging somebody and rubbing them in that affliction. No, baby, you coming out of this. And you know who I can tell you, you coming out? Because I experienced some stuff. And I remember when he brought me out. Don't forget your memory. Remember what he did yesterday and know that he'll do it today. God bless you.